Good evening, everyone. Good evening to our gallery and our virtual gallery to our May Central Goldfield Shire Council meeting. Please be upstanding for the announcement of meeting. I would like to start the meeting by acknowledging and extending my appreciation for the Jaja Wurrung people, the traditional owners of the land we're standing on today. Today, we pay our respects to leaders and elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, traditions, the culture and the hopes of all Jaja Wurrung people. The Council Prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to be present in this Council. Direct and guide our deliberations. We ask you to grant us wisdom and sensitivity as we deal with the business of Central Goldfield Shire. May each decision that we make advance the well-being of all our residents. This we pray. Amen. Um, we have no apologies this evening. We have a full house of councillors and we have no leave of absence. Councillors, do we have any conflict of interest at this stage? No. I'll move on to number five, confirmation of minutes of the previous council meeting. Uh, they're in our agenda. Councillors, do I have someone to move that those are an accurate record? Councillor Murphy, a second of police. Councillor Lavella, all those in favour? Against? That motion is carried. We also have um, 5.2, which are confidential minutes of a confidential item. Would a council like to move them, please? Councillor Lovett and a seconder. Councillor Lavella, all those in favour? Yep, against. Motion is carried. Thank you for that. There's no minutes of delegated and advisory committees. And uh, on to number seven, we do have a petition. Councillors, do I have someone to move the petition, please? Okay. Councillor Lavella, your motion is? Uh, the recommendation that council note the submitted petition and agree <laughs> to all the considered or agree to have it considered at the next council meeting. And number two, refer the petition to the CEO for consideration as prescribed by the governance rules. Thank you, Councillor Lavella. Councillor, do I have a second? Councillor Sprout. Councillor Lavella, would you like to speak to this? Um, yes, we do. We did receive this petition of the hundred and uh, I think it was hundred and seventy-four, uh, hundred and ninety-four signatures. My apologies, which was fantastic. I'd like to thank the petitioner for taking the time, and I know how uh, arduous this can become, not only to put the 194 signatories, but also to ensure it was in accordance with the requirements of our governance rules. I'd also, and this will be brought to council meeting in July 25th, I'd also like to note that changes have already been made to that in relation to those disabled sites in that precinct. There has been one additional uh, bay in Campbell Street and also one large one in Neal Street. And I do note that also that after the hospital is completed, there is designated uh, parking behind or within that precinct. So thank you very much to Petitioner Like Now Tables. Thank you. And that will be for CEO. Thank you, Councillor Lavella. Councillor Sproul, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, again, uh, thank you very much to, to all the people that, um, that signed the petitions. Um, probably got a little bit of a personal history to this because it kind of blew up on Facebook one day um, as, a, as a comment and um, I found myself tramping up and down Neil Street counting disability car parks and checking compliance and things along those lines and uh, yeah look it's, it's great that we've been able to um, install some extra uh, disability parking so I can I suppose for one stage we're actually ahead of the game on this so it's been good. Thank you. Thank you Councillor Sprout. Councillor Murphy. Uh, I like to um, give a personal situation. It's a, I help a person out um, who, who has a uh, disability uh, grandchild, cerebral palsy, can't move their legs, going to be in a wheelchair all their life, and they're about eight years old. Now, the, 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 the park which is 
at the front of the town hall, which is which is made out of two car parts, is really good because for people like that, because they've got they've got a they've got a um, bag which comes out of the back of the van. They can just stroll up and not dangerous to get onto the road. That area there that comes out of the back of the van, they get them push on the footpath, get the get the uh, everything back into the van, and off they go. But it means that just a normal car, car spot for this type of situation with with wheelchairs would go into this current car as a Kia car, Kia van, and uh, works really well. So um, that is the important one. I'm really grateful to the officers who uh, made sure that happened there. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Any other councillors would like to speak to this? If not, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? The motion is carried. Uh, we're on to the officers' reports now. Item 8 and our item 8.1 is the Council Action Plan Quarter 3 report. Councillors, do I have somebody to move that motion? Oh. Councillor de Villiers, your motion is? Um, that Council note the Council Plan Annual Action Plan 2023-2024. Progress report for quarter three. Thank you, Councillor de Villiers. Anyone would like to second that motion? Councillor Lovett. Councillor de Villiers, would you like to speak to that motion? Um, thank you. Um, I would just like to state again, I think I do it every time. This is probably my um, bedtime reading the Council Action Plan plans to go through it and just um, tick off the things that we've done and the things that still are going to happen. So thank you to all the staff and um, CEO for your um, contribution to this and the actions. Um, so, yep, makes for a really interesting reading. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor de Villiers. Councillor Lover, would you like to speak to the motion? No. Any other councillors would like to speak to this? Councillor Manos Taylor. Just briefly, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, um, within some months ago, we updated, as we've done periodically, our priority projects plan. They are about projects that are that have added value to the shark, critical added value, and are focused on how we can build the investment to do that. Recently, we passed an advocacy uh, strategy, which is which is about a focus specifically rather on projects on services. This is the third stage of this is the focus on delivery. So when you and this is this gives the update as we periodically do, as the officers prepare of the projects we deliver, uh, deliver. So when you look at the three, I think it's important to understand the work of council in the three, forward planning the future of the Shire and seeking the investment on things that are critical, advocating for those services which we're not responsible for, but which are things like telecommunications, rail services, all sorts of things like that, that we need to be a voice for our community to government. But then the critical element of delivering those things that are in our council plan that, that we identified were of importance, the brief and the staff, all the things that, that are priorities. And when you look at the three, that is a total plan of, of planning and development and delivery. And I think that, that, that completes a picture which is a healthy picture and is what this council should be on about. Thanks, Daisy. Thank you, Councillor Meadows Taylor. Any other councillors like to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? The motion is carried. Next, we have item 8.2, the Community Support Policy Review Report. Councillors, do I have someone to move? Madam Mayor, sorry, before we continue, I just have a question with regards to the policy that's being discussed now. Will that be okay? Um, uh, I'm just... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I'm just um, for clarification for myself. Um, there's a lot in the um, policy about who can apply, what it can be applied for, the purpose, and um, what cannot be applied for. The one thing that I'm unsure about that is not specifically addressed in this policy and sometimes an issue is um, a request for infrastructure and equipment support that it's not specifically addressed in the policy. It doesn't have to be added. I would just like to ask the officers, or is it something that we should discuss later? Infrastructure and equipment. Yep. Um, 
Emma Little, general manager, would you like to respond to that? Uh, yes. It's not working. The light is on. Yep. Working. No worries. Uh, Councillor de Villiers, there is an application form for in kind support that uh, community members can fill in to request uh, in kind support as opposed to a community grant. Yeah, no, I, I know. No, this is this is what you can apply for in the community grants. So, because I mean, in the past, Mill has applied for a stove. That's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So that's still ongoing. We can still apply for infrastructure and equipment, chairs, tables, yes. computers. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was the question. Thank you. So that's all good. Yep. That answers your questions. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Villiers. Um, so somebody to move 8.2. Thank you, Councillor Meadows Taylor. Your motion hits. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation that Council adopt the revised community support policy. Thank you very much. And a second up. Councillor Sproul, Councillor Meadows, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, sometimes being a bit of an old horse on the council, if you've had, had to join, and one of those is to actually pull, I think it was 2007, where for the first time, council actually introduced a, uh, a community grant budget, which was a grand total of $5,000, with individual grants at $500 ceiling. We haven't had since then. But the other thing, the next joy is something that the, this council was very much responsible for and working with the CEO to deliver and credit to, to the CEO and, and, the, and the budget process for enabling it. And that is when you look, the author is the coordinated community development. We didn't have anyone doing community development. That was, I think, a black hole that we struggled to fill for so long. And I think it was uh, in the most difficult times really that we faced under rates capping. It was some achievement that we actually now do have a coordinated community development, at least I think for the next three years, because I think that is a vital part of the process of working an interface process between, between council and community and working with community organisations in that valued partnership of how we can support them, how we can work, how we can achieve them how we can help them achieve their objectives and work together in part. So it is a delight to actually move a report that is from the Coordinated Committee Development the fact we have one. But the, the community support policy is really important. Um, as councillors are aware now, we know very clearly the Auditor General's view that the, the Auditor General does not believe that councillors should be really involved in the direct uh, lobbying of, of particular grounds and so on, that should be based on the advice of officers on the policy certainly determined by council. And it is for a council to set the policy rather than lobby and negotiate on, in, on individual things. And we can't understand the reasons for that. So, this, so what is important is to have a community support policy that sets the framework for the grants program, which is, as we know, highly contested and much uh, much sought after by our community organisations as it should be. We wish we had more money for it, we had to but we put in what we do have. So there's a lot more than the five thousand dollars we had back in two thousand and seven. So it worked hard to do that. But to get the community support policy right to review it periodically and make sure that it is fit for purpose is really important. And that is exactly the process that has followed, been followed now. Um, there are there are a range of uh, criteria, which I won't go through, that have been looked at, certainly to the, the equity, equality, inclusion, which are really important considerations to extend the parameters as far as possible to make sure that that those groups that need to have access to the policy and access to the grant program do have that access, is there. So a lot of work has gone into this, but it is important work because this will set the, the, the framework for the, the forthcoming community grants program, but it's rooted in good solid policy that has been, has been reviewed, is fit for purpose, meets the needs of, of, a, of our contemporary community and is inclusive and responsive to all needs. And uh, me and the officers for, for some hard work in doing that, uh, but it, it, it will indeed 
frame, uh, not only in the grants program uh, itself, which is a key thing, but certainly our approach to that partnership in community organisations, which is all. Thank you, Thank you, Councillor Meadows Taylor. Councillor Sproul, would you like to speak? Can't really top that, but just for um, clarification, uh, as uh, Councillor de Villiers pointed out earlier, the review date on the policy is stated as May 2025, but in the document under um, Section 7, it does say review every four years. It's just a typo on the, on the review date that needs to be updated. Noted. Any other councillors wish to speak to this? Councillor Vella. Yeah, just in conclusion, the community support policy, as Councillor Meadows Taylor said, provides a framework to ensure the community requests and applications for council support are managed in a consistent, transparent, and equitable man manner. A review of the existing policy, as been outlined, including gender impact assessment, has identified several recommendations to strengthen the policy, better align the council objectives, improve processes, and ensure council is meeting relevant, relevant legislative requirements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bella. Any other councillors like to speak to this motion? If not, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? And the motion is carried. That brings us to item 8.3 of the Office of Reports, uh, RFT. It's a Transfer Operations and Management and Ancillary Service Report. It's a confidential tender evaluation report, which was provided to the councillors under a separate cover. Councillors, do I have someone to move this motion? Councillor Sproul? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move the Office's recommendations um, that based on the assessment, the evaluation panel makes the following recommendations that the Council 1 awards contract G1877-2023 transfer station operation and management and ancillary services to Veolia Environmental Services Proprietary Limited for the total contract sum of $3,002,179.57 exclusive of GST for two years initial term and one year extension by mutual agreement by both parties. Two, authorises the Chief Executive Officer to do all things necessary to execute contract G1877-2023, including advising the respondents of Council's decision in this matter. Three, authorises the Chief Executive Officer to do all things necessary to negotiate the extended terms and conditions of contract G1877-2023 and sign the extended term of contract G1877-2023. And four, delegates to the Chief Executive Officer financial delegation to approve any expenditure made under the initial term and extended term of contract G1877-2023. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Councillors, do I have a second for a question? Councillor Murphy. Councillor Sproul. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as, as I say, with every, uh, it seems to be every waste type of contract. Um, it's a forever evolving um, landscape. Uh, this contract was um, sought for in the initial two years with the with the third year by mutual agreement. It's a relatively short um, tender op offer um, pending a full service review of transfer, transfer station operations. Um, Violia are the current contractors that operate there. Um, yeah, that's Thank you. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Councillor Murphy, would you like to speak to the motion? Nothing further to add. Any other councillors like to speak to this motion? No, I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? That motion is carried. Next up, we have the 2023 Energy Breakthrough Evaluation Report. Councillors, do I have somebody to move that motion? Councillor uh, Lovett, your motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move that Council endorse the 2023 Energy Breakthrough Event Debrief Report. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Do I have a second, please? Okay. Councillor de Villiers. Councillor Lovett, would you like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
In fact, you should be the one giving this report, seeing that you're so actively involved in it. However, I'm more than happy to. The Energy Breakthrough stands as Central Goldfield Shire's largest event and the largest of its kind in Australia. In response to the challenges posed by the pandemic and escalating event costs, the committee took proactive steps to implement a new model aimed at cost savings. The 2023 event following these changes not only achieved over $100,000 in overhead savings compared to the previous year, but also garnered overwhelming positive feedback from stakeholders. Looking ahead, efforts are underway to secure funding through tax deductible donations, philanthropic avenues and leveraging CEP's approved status. For our event in 2023, just to recap, 220 teams from 108 schools completed, 3,500 students, teachers and families camped out in Princess Park. The event contributed $3.66 million to the local economy over the period of the event. Volunteers continue to play an important role in the delivery of the event with over 700 active volunteers contributing more than 2,340 hours this year. That's the equivalent in dollar terms of $75,000. And in addition to that, some local community groups fundraise at the event and it's estimated that they raised, raised a total of 30 $5,000. Absolutely fantastic. As the energy breakthrough evolves and adapts to changing circumstances, its enduring impact on education, local economies and community engagement remains steadfast for our major event. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Councillor Deville, would you like to speak? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. Any other councillors would like to speak? Councillor Barrow-Saylor. Um, Thanks, Madam Mayor. Just one point to add. Um, I've been slightly involved in the regional tourism over the years. And one of the things you get to find out is how your municipality is viewed. And one of the things that is consistent is that Central Goldfield is regarded for its capacity to, to manage events and the capability that we bring that is considered to be quite special is the degree to which our officers work with the events people to go that extra step, to put things out, to set things up, to prepare, to work with them. That is regarded as something that is quite distinct that we do, that our officers do. It's beautiful, Queen of Ross, I don't do it, but the, you know, the officers do, do do that. And it is regarded as something that is very special about Central Goldfield. And I just think at this stage, when we recognise energy breakthrough, and as Councillor Lovett, through well, your own leadership contributions since you've been on council, I know Councillor Lovett volunteers, and uh, there's a range of contributions. But I just think in that, the contribution that our infrastructure team, our officers make, setting things out, cleaning things, repairing things, working, on some, sometimes some fairly basic things are all important to the success of the event and they deserve our thanks, our appreciation and the recognition that that contribution adds to our capability and the respect that we have in terms of putting on events like Energy Breakthrough and other, other events. Thanks, Madam. Thank you, Councillor Mellis. Taylor, any other council like to speak to this motion? No, put it to the vote. All those in favour? Against? That motion is carried. That concludes our officers' reports. Uh, we're on to item nine, council reports in general business, of which there is none. Number 10, there are no notice of motion. And then we move on to urgent business, item 11, and we have got an item for urgent business. Councillor Murphy. The item for urgent business is? Uh, is the pool, the Maribara Olympic pool. So 11.1? Yep, 11.1. Uh, as, as it's um, 
remember our outdoor pool, and I'm the contractor. I'm out of, I'm leaving the building. Councillor Murphy, um, Councillor Murphy is leaving the meeting at 25 past six. Elders. Due to a conflict of interest. Oh, Councillor Us to accept urgent business, I would like a uh, councillor to move a motion, please, to uh, table urgent business. Councillor Sproul. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to move um, that council agrees to consider a matter of urgent business in relation to the Meribara Outdoor Pool as it relates to a matter which has arisen since distribution of the agenda and cannot be deferred until the next council meeting. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Do I have a second for that? Councillor Meadows Taylor. All those in favour? Against? That motion is carried. Now I'd like to ask for a motion in regards to the urgent business. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move that Council 1. Note the unsuccessful outcome of the application to the federal government's growing regions fund for the Meribara Olympic Pool Complex. And two, that council defer council's co-contribution to the Victorian government sport and recreation Victoria regional community and sports infrastructure fund application for the Meribara Olympic Pool Com Complex through $4 million in future borrowings until further discussions and clarification of issues and potential opportunities are held. Thank you to Councillor Lovett. Do I have a second, please? Yes, Councillor Meadows Taylor. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm firmly of the opinion that Council need to have very, a very specific and strategic discussion with regards to our outdoor pool. When Council took the decision to close the pool on occupational health and safety grounds, we made a commitment to the community to leave no stone unturned and to seek funding to reopen the pool. We have just learned that we missed out on our application for federal funding, meaning that we, the Council, will need to borrow $4 million to make up. There is a moving landscape with regards to the Meribara Olympic Pool. We currently have an application into the state government for funding, which I have to say, we feel very positive about. But I have heard that one of the funding conditions for the new pool will be for it to be accessible to all members of the community, that is, people with all abilities. I've also heard that to make the Olympic pool all abilities accessible, we in fact will lose one lane. So the eight-lane Olympic pool will become seven lanes, and that raises questions in my mind. Is it still an Olympic swimming pool. I believe Council need to discuss, are there other alternatives for us to consider prior to make our final decision? I believe so. And there is a possibility with innovative thinking, who knows, we may even come up with an alternative proposal at a less, lesser cost to Council. However, while still fully committed to the Olympic pool complex and its reopening, we must explore all options and they need to be looked at strategically and what's in the best interest of Central Goldfield Shire. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you to Councillor Lovett. Councillor Meadows Taylor. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, one of the things that those that sometimes criticise or really criticise council is 
is that all you send back at points of time that you're going to do this, and you haven't done that. The reality is, as Councillor Lovett said, the ground has changed so many times since then. It's often being on a council is a bit like looking in a kaleidoscope because the, the grants, the opportunities that we depend on are co constantly change, costs change, opportunities to source and do things change, availability of staff and contractors change. So we have to manage that constant changing environment that Councillor Barber alluded to. Now, we did apply for the, for, the, for, the, for the federal funding and we were disappointed we didn't get that. But I think since then, we've also realised that there are issues we need to work through. One of the challenges when things are tough and we work in a, we're living in a tough environment, a tough, particularly tough environment for small council, is that when opportunities arise and the sport and recreation uh, grants are, are one, the temptation is, of course, to grab what you can when you can. But however tempting that is, uh, when a matter in the wilderness, I think the wiser course of action is to do what Council Lover has said, and that is to put all the options on the table again to look at it. Yes, if we are going to borrow, what do we borrow for? If we borrow for the pool, we know that the pool is, is a priority, but then so are other things. What are we going to borrow? When will we borrow? In what conjunction of other opportunities will we borrow? Be? And I think that we've just now realised that with the, re, the uh, knockback from, from, the, from the Commonwealth, which uh, uh, may open future opportunities again, but for the time being, we don't have that opportunity. Um, we need to rethink, we need to go back to the, to, to the, to the planning board again. We need to re-look at things. Uh, we need to look at the pool in the context of, uh, as Council Lovett said, potential other opportunities for the pool, what we can do with it, but also other competing projects that we have. And if we are going to borrow what we borrow for, and so on. So, so the, this, this, this requires major, major discussion. And I think my view is hearing councillors as we work through this, we haven't got all the answers at this point of time. This has forced us to reconsider. And I think we should have no shame in saying the best thing that we can do now is to say, let's have a fresh look at this again in the context of all available uh, opportunities, potential opportunities, other demands, and make uh, the most informed decision that we can, even if at this point of time, this means that we, uh, we have to de 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 defer our action that we've had in relation to uh, the, the, the state grants, but I think that is the right decision and I certainly support that motion. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Would uh, Councillor Sproul? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would just like to foreshadow, if this motion is lost, I would like to foreshadow an alternate motion being the officer's recommendations within the current report. Thank you, Councillor Sproul. Councillor Lavella. Making decisions on the run really is not what we should be doing. Yes, as was mentioned, the landscape has changed, and I do agree with both councillors in that, that way. The total re the revised project budget is now $7 million. That is a lot of money. We aren't sure whether we will be successful with the next grant. $4 million is a lot to this council. We do need a strategic discussion around this moving forward. And as I just said, making decisions on the run is not clever governance. So for that reason, I will not be agreeing with the recommendation. I will be discussing or agreeing with Councillor Lovett's revised recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Lavella. Any other councillors like to speak? Councillor Sproul. Sorry, I obviously foreshadowed the motion, but um, just in regards to Councillor Lovett's um, motion, so I will not be supporting Councillor Lovett's motion 
this this thing again as, as all, all big money ones are, are, are tricky but um this was a re this this funding here this original four million dollar funding was agreed to by this council in um in March of last year um now I wasn't actually at that meeting and at the time I probably wouldn't have voted for it um yet over the 12 months or so, 15, 15 months, um, I suppose I'll probably change my mind. I'll be a little bit back and forward, but um, I think, you know, we've invested so much money into the uh, into the pool complex as it is. I agree it would have been much nicer had we had the federal funding uh, to reduce our borrowing. Um, you know, it's, it's an asset that the community hold dear, it does need to be fixed. It doesn't need to be repaired. I do understand that, um, you know, we have um, all abilities access at the at the indoor pool, um, but at the end of the day, every, you know, we want everybody in our community to have access to everything. Um, and so if that's a condition upon the grant, I, I, I support that. Um, I'm not a pool expert from what I can kind of read. Um, if we if we drop the seven lanes, uh, an Olympic pool, um, it gets a little bit technical on the terms. Um, you've got competition pool in Olympics, so I think competition is eight. Olympic is ten lanes. Um, for a general pool, though, I think it's it's stated that the number of lanes are not necessarily um, an ultimate requirement. It's more the width of the lanes, and so providing whatever remaining lanes are two point five meters wide. Um, I, uh, I believe we can still hold, you know, competitions and, and, and things there with with reduced um, with reduced numbers. Uh, I don't believe we're making decisions on the run. As I said, this this was decision was was um, made back in in March last year. So I, I support the officer's recommendations, which is against um, Council Lovett. So I suppose I'm speaking against the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sprayer. Any other councillors like to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Lovett, do you have a right of reply? Just for the community's benefit, I would like to reiterate that Council are still fully committed to the reopening of the Mariborra Olympic Pool Complex. And the key word is complex. We talk about the Olympic pool, but it is just one element in a complex. And that complex includes a children's paddling pool that we've just spent a million dollars on. It includes the pavilion entrance to the Mirabara Olympic swimming pool complex. Very important. The entrance to the Mariborra Pool is Art Deco, and in fact, we are the only operational Art Deco swimming pool still in Victoria. It is unique. So I reiterate for those who are listening that this council is fully committed to reopening the Mariborra Olympic Pool complex. However, we can't do it on our own. It is beyond our financial resources and we are reliant on state and or Commonwealth funding and we will continue to seek help from those bodies. That's why I believe that we need to take our time to assess all options before we finally get to the final decision. And I would also like to reiterate and remind our community that the closure was forced on us. We actually closed the Olympic Swimming Pool, pool Complex on occupational health and safety grounds we received engineering reports to say that if the pool continued to stay open, it was almost certain that sometime in the near future, there would be a catastrophic breakdown 
of the structure of the swimming pool. So we were forced into the position of closing it. And for the third time, I will reiterate, this council are committed, fully committed, to the reopening of the Meribara Olympic Pool Complex, but we need help. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. That concludes the debate. I will now put it to the vote. All those in favour? Of what? Councillor Lovett's motion to defer. Against? The motion is carried. Thank you. That concludes our other business. There's no confidential business. So on behalf of that, I will now close the meeting. Thank you to our gallery. Thank you to our virtual gallery and everyone for their attendance. Please driving home, please do so safely and we'll see you next month. Thank you.